In 1953, Stanley Miller, a graduate student at UC Berkeley, wanted to perform an experiment that would prove a theory that the scientific community had about the origin of life. And this theory, this hypothesis, was known as chemical evolution. Chemical evolution was a simple but extremely profound scientific idea stating that life on this planet started from chemical reactions billions of years ago within Earth's ancient atmospheres and deep within our earliest oceans. It was hypothesized that the reactions happening within Earth's ancient atmosphere billions of years ago created simple molecules and products that fell in the form of rain down into Earth's early forming oceans. And within these oceans at the very bottom, near deep sea vents that came into contact with Earth's burning hot internal core, new reactions formed that formed the very earliest simple organic molecules of life. What scientists wanted to know was how could they recreate these reactions of ancient Earth? How could they recreate everything that was going on in Earth's atmosphere and oceans billions of years ago in laboratories today? And Stanley Miller decided to try that out What what became his famous Miller Urey experiment. Miller designed this experiment knowing these very important scientific facts. That in early chemical evolution, scientists believed that the main products were small organic molecules, meaning they, t- they contained carbon, such as formaldehyde and hydrogen cyanide. Now, what reactants made these molecules? Now, these were the gases, hydrogen gas, ammonia, carbon dioxide, and methane. These were the gases that Miller was going to introduce into his experiment to try to react with one another to produce simple organic molecules such as formaldehyde and hydrogen cyanide, the simple organic molecules that scientists believed were the first to form. If he successfully could do this, he could prove that chemical evolution was a plausible theory for how life originated on this planet. Now, Miller designed this experiment in a very simple way, but it was very accurate to represent how the atmosphere interacts with the ocean. He used a large flask at the top left of the screen to represent Earth's atmosphere, and he connected it with glass tubing to a smaller flask at the bottom right of the screen to represent Earth's ocean. Miller placed several gases in the large flask at the top left representing Earth's atmosphere, specifically hydrogen gas, methane, and ammonia. And he placed liquid water in the smaller flask at the bottom right that represented Earth's ocean. To effectively connect the mini atmosphere from the large flask to the mini ocean of the smaller flask, Miller constantly boiled the experiment. He was constantly adding the heat source seen at the bottom right of the screen. As the liquid in the small flask heated into a vapor, it would circulate upward and toward the left and back down into the large flask representing Earth's atmosphere. And as it cooled, this would drop down in the form of liquid water back into the smaller flask. So there was a constant circulation of solution throughout the entire experiment. This constant circulation and design was extremely important because if the simple molecules that were being created in Earth's early atmosphere were forming, they needed to reach Earth's ocean. And the way they did this was in the form of rain. So in the experiment, as the liquid vapor condensed, in the form of liquid once again back into the ocean, this simulated exactly just that. It simulated rainfall. And it allowed the mixture to go back into the small flask at the bottom right representing the ocean. Because the oceans is where all of life would have been started. That is where the so-called prebiotic soup would have existed. Now, it's important to pause and take a moment to understand the very critical importance of sunlight in all of these reactions. When these gases were reacting with one another, they wouldn't be able to have created these simple molecules, meaning these reactions wouldn't have had the necessary energy to move forward if it wasn't for this external energy source. Now, billions of years ago, 
there wasn't much of an ozone layer. So the very intense high energy photons from sunlight were penetrating through out the Earth's atmosphere onto the Earth's surface. And this energy would have been able to push these reactions forward. This was the necessary energy that the reactants, the gases needed to react with one another, to break those bonds and to create new molecules. Now, if Miller had stopped his experiment with simply just boiling the water and allowing the vapor to circulate, nothing would have happened. And that's exactly what he found. So what he did was he wanted to simulate the sun, the powerful, intense energy that was that is emitted through sunlight. And he did this with electrodes that you can see that he added to the flask at the top left of the screen representing the atmosphere. So the electrodes were like mini lightning bolts that he added to the gases reacting in the larger flask. And what he found was that after one or two days of continuously boiling and sparking this solution, the mixture in the bottom right flask representing the ocean began to change colors. It turned to a pinkish color, and after about a week, it turned to dark red, and it was cloudy. And Miller knew that something had happened, and that new products, new molecules, had formed in the solution. And when he analyzed his solution to see exactly what these products were, he was amazed to find that they were extremely similar to what scientists had predicted. His experiment was successful. His solution, after a week of boiling and shocking these gases contained hydrogen cyanide and formaldehyde, large amounts of these simple organic molecules. But these weren't the only thing that he ate was able to synthesize in his solution. What he actually made in addition to these molecules were amino acids. And amino acids are so important because they are the building blocks of the most versatile group of molecules found in living organisms on this planet, and that is proteins. So this experiment as a whole was so profound and successful in helping prove that the theory of chemical evolution as the plausible origin of life was a very true possibility. Miller used the same gases that were present in Earth's early atmosphere to produce the same early molecules that originated life on this planet. And not only did he recreate these molecules, but he was able to recreate amino acids. And that was the beauty of his experiment, that it was simple, but it was genius. Thank you, Miller, for your discovery because it was a terrific one for the scientific community and to help propel our understanding for the origin of life on this planet through chemical evolution. Thank you guys for joining STEMstream. We'll see you next time.